opening statements on the victory. And for questions, first we'll go to Charles Odom, followed by Chip Towers. Yeah, to open with our fan base, what an incredible turnout. It felt like a home game when you looked up in the stands to see all the red. I expected it um, to be that way, but maybe not as much as it was. Uh, I thought our guys started fast, and we challenged them to start fast. Um, I was pleased with that. I was pleased with no penalties. Um, we had some sloppy series defensively and offensively, but all in all, the guys came out and uh, they executed to a standard and you know, they, they didn't play the scoreboard. They, they played uh, to our standard and I was proud of what they were able to do. Obviously, your, your background is defense, uh, finishing the regular season with your uh, team's third shutout. Uh, um, I know that you're always looking for improvement, but what does a third shutout mean to you? So the third shutout is hard to come by. I've coached a lot of uh, uh, a lot of seasons in the SEC. I feel like I've been around the league for you know twenty something years, and uh, three shutouts is hard to come by. And I'm really proud of those guys, especially the twos that got to come in there in the uh, late in the third and the whole fourth quarter and try to hold that standard. Uh, I was really proud of them for doing that. Coach, uh, um, do you get much time to enjoy this? Obviously, it was a, a historic win. Uh, you got to turn your attention to the you know biggest game of the year. Uh, I assume now, um, how much can you enjoy this, and can you talk a little bit about facing Alabama next week? Yeah, I, I think we embrace it. Uh, we get the Governor's Trophy, which is a great honor. Um, you know, our expectation was to come in here and win this game, and uh, that makes it you know that's the enjoyment is enjoying the game and enjoying the second half and seeing the other guys playing. So, uh, makes it easier to transition. Uh, where it's not so emotional. You know, you're not uh, invested emotionally when the, the game is uh, kind of finished and over uh, in the third and fourth quarter. So that probably helped uh, in terms of not wasting emotion. But, you know, we know it's a big one coming up. We Everybody's had it kind of circled and seen it out there. And we've really tried to work hard on getting better. And that's been the emphasis is what can we improve on. Um, in the last, you know, two weeks, we tried to be ascending. We tried to get some guys back healthy. Um, and, and that's going to be the focus this week is nobody trying to do more than they should. Uh, we just need to be at our best, and uh, we need to play um, uh, our, one of our best football games. They, they've got a really talented, talented football team. We'll next go to Mark Weiser, followed by Anthony Dasher. Kirby, I think after that Clemson game, you guys won every game by 17 or more points. What, what does it say about – kind of sustaining that level of play week after week, you know, when you guys have already achieved a goal, like winning the SEC East and, and just uh, some kind of consistent consistency like that. Well, it helps with your depth. I think you get to play other guys. You know, I constantly worry about conditioning in four quarter games because the Clemson game, you know, was the first game of the year and I, I thought we were a little tired and we had to play the whole time. Um, so we've worked really hard on Mondays and Tuesdays, you know, running guys. Guys, trying to make sure that we're keeping our stamina up. But um, it's, it, it just says that they hold each other accountable. They're up for the task. They've answered the bell. They've done the right things. Um, but we also haven't played a team the caliber of Alabama. So that, that the important thing is we've got to be able to execute for four quarters and do it at a high level. Hey, Coach, you mentioned, uh, you know, getting healthy. Obviously, Jamari and, and Chris Smith were not able to go today. Was that more of a precautionary or just some more concerns about those guys? No, it was not precautionary. I mean, they, were, they weren't they were able to go. I mean, uh, we, we tried to get both of them back. They're both fighting back. Um, we thought Jamari was back, and then he had a little setback on uh, – I can't remember if it was Tuesday or Wednesday, but he had a little bit of a setback. But it, it wasn't the same injury he had before. It was some scar tissue, so – we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to get him back, and then we're hopeful for Chris too. But um, we just know that. We'll go to Dean Leggy, followed by Connor Riley. Kirby, I want to get back to the no penalties thing. How, how many times in your career have you seen it? I mean, it's just so rare. Can you recall a time that y'all did that at Bama or even? I don't. I, I don't know that I've ever really looked at it. I mean, it's not a, a, a stat category that I look at. You only look at it when it's bad, right? So if you have a bunch of them and it's like, it's like, oh man, we had a lot of penalties. But I didn't even know it. You know, somebody came over and told me after the game and said, "Hey, we had no penalties." And I thought, wow, that's you know, that can be good and bad. That's that's one of those. Are you being aggressive enough? Are you, you know, are you are you blocking aggressive enough? And uh, those kind of things. You want to you want to press the limits um, of what you can do, but. 
I'm very pleased with that. I mean, we, 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 we count them and watch them in practice and, and we harp on, you know, not being penalized, but uh, we certainly want to be aggressive. Hey Kirby, George Pickens makes his debut today. Just what does it mean for this team to get not, you know, what he could be as a player, but just him as a person back on this team, back on this, given all he's put in the last eight months. Well, first, I'm just proud of the effort George has put into getting back. He's worked really hard. I mean, this guy's, we know the guys on the team that have had ACLs. It's a, it's a, it's a mental injury as much as it is a physical injury. I mean, it's taxing and it's draining to sit there and watch all your friends go out and, and play in the spring and play the spring game and then go play in the fall. And you're sitting there uh, doing rehab all the time. So George loves football and George has always really wanted to get back and uh, have an opportunity to get out there. And we were able to integrate him a little more in practice and try to get him some confidence uh, in his legs and some things. And, and he's done a really good job. He's hit good GPS numbers. He's worked really hard at what he's doing. And uh, he has to continue to do that because it's one thing to just go catch the ball. It's another thing to get the signal, get lined up, know who I block, know what I do on my conversions. And he's still getting all that back kind of in the flow of things. We'll next go to Jed May and then Jake Rowe. Yeah, Kirby, y'all y'all keep talking about ascending and, and working to play better and all that kind of stuff. Even if it's not perfect, I mean, do y'all feel like this team is, you know, playing its best football over the year right now? Uh, I think they're hungry to play their best. You know, we're still getting better. Um, what excites me is that, like, the strength of our team is our team, <laughs> you know, and, like, that, 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 that is what excites me. It's not like the strength of our team is this or that. It's it's the leaders, it's the players on the team that are the strength of the team. They 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 came in and and said the things that needed to be said to the players about this week and and how it's going to go. And uh, when they speak, people listen. So I, I think we're getting better. Um, I think that you're also getting towards the end of the year when sometimes things get sloppy. I'm talking about tackling, wrapping up, uh, blocking on the perimeter. You got to really stay locked into those things. Hey, Kirby, uh, Kiaris comes out with that rib injury. Do you know anything about that, how severe it might be and, and what his status might be? Don't. I thought he was going to be able to go back. Is a little bit of rib injury, and I don't know how different it is from the one he had a while back. I asked him, and, um, you know, he said it was pretty painful and didn't think he could, <coughs> didn't think he could go. So he uh, held him out at that point. We'll next go to Seth Emerson, followed by Jack Duffy. Kirby, on, on George coming back, there was a roar from the crowd. Uh, when they saw him go in, uh, it meant – what did it mean to you to see him go in? What do you think it meant to him? Because obviously when he tore his ACL, there were a lot of people who thought his Georgia career was over. Yeah, I, I thought it meant a lot to him to hear that. He knows uh, – he's very charismatic. He, like, he, he has a great personality in football. Like he had practiced for the last th three weeks, I guess, four weeks. I don't know how long it's been. He's been a – He's a joy to have out there because he's like an energy ball. You just, you know, you never know what he's going to do. He goes up and catches balls and competes and uh, brings juice to practice um, like he always has. And um, he's made some really good plays in practice. You know, he hasn't uh, really been clear for contact until really the end of this past week. And I just thought it meant a lot to him to get out there and try to gain some confidence, you know, some things he could have done better um, that he wasn't perfect at. And, um, and he's got to continue to – to get involved in some things. And, he, and he's still not, I mean, he, he's safe and he's cleared, but he's not, he's not a hundred percent right now. You know, he's got that, he's got the knee brace on and I think he's pushing that, but we're proud of uh, the GPS numbers he's hit. Hey Kirby, uh, talk to me about the undefeated regular season. I mean, it, it hasn't happened at Georgia since 1982. What, what does this achievement mean to you and, and, and for this team? I hate to just, demean it I mean I'm not it's not it's a big deal it's an honor it's great but it's it's the next step in the process for for this group you know it's just this group has had a, a single-minded focus um it never said hey let's go 12 and 0 it just said hey let's beat everybody we play and um let's focus one game at a time and try to really dominate who we play um and they've they've done that you know our prep has been better some weeks than others but I, I can't say that we've had a, a down week of practice. If there was anything close, it was probably Charleston Southern. And I feel like this week they had good focus and good energy. Um, and the same will be required. I think it's something we'll look back on and be really proud of. 
Um, but a lot more is going to be judged based on, you know, what we do in the future. We'll next go to Miles Arthur and then to Palmer Toms. What's up, Coach? Obviously, uh, like you said, it was a very much, a very much an electric environment. Um, what does it mean to you and to your team to go into Tech and not only shut them out, but to, again, to beat your state rival the way you did? Uh, it's awesome. It's great for the kids. There's so many guys from Atlanta. I think it's good for recruiting. Um, our, our, our recruits, you know, they text and say, man, look at all the Georgia fans that have taken over the stadium. And, uh, you know, a lot of my friends are like, it's, it's, it's convenient. You know, they live in Atlanta. They get to come to the game and, uh, and watch the dogs play in Atlanta. And I know that atmosphere was great. It seemed like the weather was great. Kirby Stetson's first nine completions were to nine different receivers. What does that say about the depth of your pass catchers and, and the – potential for it with George coming back. I missed the end of that. What was that? What does it say about the potential of this group, uh, you know, of pass catchers, the depth of them and, and the potential for it with George coming back? Well, I mean, with or without George back, I think the, 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 the group has uh, come a long way. I mean, they've done a tremendous job. I think, uh, you know, other guys, AD has developed and, and is really playing good football right now. Jermaine has come on as healthy. Uh, Lads playing well. I mean, you look at the things the guys are doing. Brock. I mean, things people don't talk about on Brock is the perimeter blocking he's been able to do. Darnell's a big target. You know, I think Coach Munkin deserves and the offensive staff deserves some credit for uh, using the skill sets of the players that we have. We'll next go to Michael Cunningham, followed by Angela Morian. Coach, um, Alabama's kind of been looming in the background throughout this whole season. And uh, you said that you never thought that your team lost focus. Now that Bama's here, uh, what what is your message to the team going forward? Uh, the, the SEC championship is one of the greatest environments there is in all of college sports, like all of college sports. Compares with Final Four, compares with uh, College World Series. It's one of the greatest events. You go back to – you know, one of the Bama games, uh, Bama Georgia SEC championship games, and, and you got the most viewed game, um, even the whole season over the national championship. So I think what Commissioner Sankey and the SEC leadership has created <clears throat> is value in a game when a lot of championships don't have the same value. Um, and the stage and television audience and the national audience you get is tremendous for our school, for recruiting. Uh, for everything, and um, it's just one of the greatest events to play in, in in a great location where football is is king all across the South. Coach Lad McConkey is from our area in Chattanooga area. How much of an asset has he been for you guys this season? Just incredible. I just go back to the decision to to sign him, and it's just one of the better decisions we've made because you know so many people doubt. Um, doubt that he could make it that he could play he's so consistent he gives you the same work every day he's tough as nails he's smart dependable fast I mean everything you want in a football player and uh, wish we had you know more like him and our final question today will go to Emily Gangrel with uh, CBS 46. And if not, Emily, we'll try Allison Mastrangelo. Hey, Coach, I know you talked about briefly the no penalties and, and how great that was, but you also had zero interceptions. Just overall, how good is it to have a clean football game going into the SEC championship game when you want to play your best? That's big. It's one of the big things we've been focused on. We, we don't focus as much on the penalties. We focus on the no turnovers. And I thought Tech was ripping and tearing at the ball on our ball carriers, so we protected it well. Um, Stets had one or two that were, um, you know, they were dangerous. And uh, that, that's a big part of decision-making is, is going the right place for the ball. And when it's not there, um, tuck it and run and get what you can get and try to keep us out of long yard situations. But I was, I was proud that we did not turn it over. Thanks, Coach. One more note, courtesy of Anthony Dasher. Anthony looked up and found out the last time we had no penalties in a game was 2019, also against Georgia Tech. So thanks, Dash, for doing uh, our jobs for us. Always count on Dash. Thanks, Dash.